Welcome to worship on November 15th. I am Pastor Lorenda Hoover of the Glidden, Lanesboro Community, and Lorville United Methodist Churches. We are on our fifth and final week of our Faith of Mr. Rogers series. Today's topic is Mr. Rogers on Love. Because Lorville United Methodist Church is online only currently, we are back to a fuller worship service until they return to in-person worship. Kimberly Schroeder and Mary Ross are helping us with our hymns today. I hope you will let us know you have joined us for worship by sharing a greeting in the comments. Our order of worship was mailed and emailed out earlier this week. There will also be a link to it in the comments for this video. As we begin, I encourage you to choose a place in your home to worship. If possible, place a candle where you can see it. Have matches or a lighter handy. Set a Bible close at hand, perhaps already open to Luke chapter 12, verse 6. Feel free to pause this video to arrange your space. Gather around the worship space you have created. Light the candle, if you're using one, remembering that Jesus is the light of the world and is with us. As we have been doing in our in-person services, I invite you to join me if you choose in preparing our bodies and our whole selves for worship by inviting Christ to be in our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Please pray with me. Great God of love, help us to feel your love and care and to offer that love to others. Amen. Our first hymn is Jesus Loves Me, sung by Kimberly. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, as he loved so long ago, taking children on his knee, saying, let them come to me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me still today, walking with me on my way, wanting as a friend to to all who live. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Thank you, Kimberly. Our scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 6 to 7 and 29 to 34, as found in the Common English Bible. Jesus is speaking to the crowds who have come to hear him. It is written, Aren't five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them is overlooked by God. Even the hairs on your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Don't chase after what you will eat and what you will drink. Stop worrying. All the nations of the world long for these things. Your father knows that you need them. Instead, desire his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Make for yourselves wallets that don't wear out, a treasure in heaven that never runs out. No thief comes near there, and no moth destroys. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be too. You may be wondering why this scripture passage makes no direct reference to love when the theme today is Mr. Rogers on love. I wondered a bit about that too until I realized that these passages are about love, even if they don't use the word itself. 
There are two key facets of love in these verses. First, the idea that God loves us and delights in us. And secondly, knowing that God loves us frees us to love others. Or as 1 John 4.19 says, we love because God first loved us. First and foremost here is that God loves us, that we are precious to God. We hear that in the first verses of our reading. Aren't five sparrows sold for two small coins? Yet not one of them is overlooked by God. Even the hairs on your head are all counted. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Or the short version, God sees and values sparrows, but God sees, loves, and values us much more than sparrows. This promise, this knowledge that God loves me, that God loves all of us, is at the heart of my own faith. I am a Christian because I know that God loves me just the way I am, and the best way I know to respond to that love is to love God and my neighbor back through the Christian faith. This was also at the heart of Fred Rogers' faith and something he strove to share with children and adults through Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and all his interactions with people. In his 1969 testimony before Congress, among the things Fred Rogers said was this, This is what I give an expression of care every day to each child to help him realize that he is unique. I end the program by saying, you've made this day a special day by just your being you. There's no person in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are. This was so pivotal to who Fred Rogers was that this section of his testimony was shown at his funeral. Mr. Rogers wanted every child in the world to know that they were worth more than many sparrows, that they were beloved and precious just the way they were, that God delights in them. And he knew that the best way to do that was to be someone who loved and valued every child and indeed every adult he encountered. He knew that our image and understanding of God is first and most strongly imparted to us by our parents and other important adults in our lives. He knew that whether we saw God as loving and welcoming or angry and judgmental depended on what our parents taught us by their interactions with us. If we felt loved and accepted by our parents, we are likely to experience God as one who loves and accepts us. If our parents were critical and impossible to please, we are likely to experience God as angry, constantly wanting to pounce when we mess up. I was fortunate to grow up with parents who loved and accepted me, who imparted a deep sense of God's love and care for me and for everyone. I have always known that God loved me without question and without reserve. Yet there were other adults in my life who experienced God very differently than I did. They experienced God as angry, judgmental, and waiting to pounce. They had grown up believing that you had to work hard to please God and that if you made mistakes, God would be angry with you. They believed that God's love was only for those who were perfect or close to perfect. My paternal grandmother and my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Taylor, were people like that. Both women who had been taught that God was harsh and that we aren't worth much in God's eyes. And that understanding of God carried over into their treatment of the children around them. I don't think I ever heard a word of praise or affirmation come out of my grandmother's mouth, but I heard her voice plenty of criticism. While my fourth grade teacher was rarely displeased with me, I repeatedly heard her call other students lazy and worthless. Because my parents were so loving and affirming, because they accepted me and modeled a God who loved unconditionally, the attitude of my grandmother and Mrs. Taylor didn't have the effect it could have. But I wouldn't say it had no effect. Doubts about my own worth and a deep fear of messing up show up more than I would like in my spirit and my life. Mr. Rogers, too, had supportive family. His grandfather, for example, said to him, Thank you for making the day special just by being you, something Fred Rogers said to his television audience in every show. But he knew that not every child has that, and he knew from personal experience that every child, even if they have supporting, loving adults in their lives, as I did, will experience adults who lead them to question and worth their worth and value, which was also my experience. So he sought to be a voice that said to everyone he encountered, you are worth more than many sparrows. 
Who have been those voices in your life? Who has shown you that you are worth more than many sparrows? Take a few moments to ponder and to name them aloud. Thank you, God, for these people who have shown your love to us. Sometimes this focus on God's love for us, on our self-worth, has been seen as selfish or coddling. Certainly my grandmother and Mrs. Taylor, my fourth grade teacher, would have made such objections because that is what they themselves had been taught. But our scripture today makes clear that that is not the case. It is only when we understand how loved and precious we are that we can truly and gladly give of ourselves. Go back to the last part of today's reading where Jesus says, Don't be afraid, little flock, because your Father delights in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Notice the connection here between being secure in the knowledge of God's love and delight and the ability to give to others. Your Father delights in giving you the kingdom. Your Father delights. We are invited to set aside our fear and rest in the promise that God delights in us, that we are worth more than sparrows. That assurance makes the next part possible. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. We are not called to sell our possessions and give to those in need in order for God to take delight in us, but because God takes delight in us. Can you hear the difference there? We're not called to sell our possessions and give to those in need in order for God to take delight in us, but because God already takes delight in us. God's love and care for us frees us up to love and care for others and to do so gladly, not begrudgingly or resentfully. We are commanded to love our neighbor, but we can fully and joyfully only do so only when we know and trust how much God loves us. Today and in the days to come, find those people and voices that help you trust that you are worth more than many sparrows. Take time in prayer to reflect on how much God loves you and let that love and joy spill out to those around you. Thank you for making this day special and thank you for being who you are, a beloved child of God. Amen. One of the ways we express our love for God, self, and others is through prayer. If you have specific prayer concerns, I invite you to list them in the comments. I also invite you to pray for the concerns that others have named there. I will be doing the same throughout the day. As I lead us in these prayers, I will end each request with the words, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me in the words, hear our prayer. In some of the prayer petitions, I will leave pauses for you to lift up the names of people or situations. Please join me now as we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious and loving God, thank you for loving us even when we feel unlovable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to love our neighbors and our enemies as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant strength, energy, and Sabbath rest to healthcare workers stretched thin, caring for COVID patients and others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant wisdom, humility, and a commitment to justice to all our leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal all who are sick, injured, recovering from or anticipating surgery, including those we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Welcome into your loving embrace all who have died and comfort all who grieve, especially those we name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Hear all the joys, the sorrows, and the questions of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is inspired by these verses from Luke. It's His Eye is on the Sparrow. I invite you now to listen to Mary sing this hymn for us. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Let not your heart be troubled, his tender word I hear, and resting on his goodness, I lose my doubts and fears, though by the path he leadeth, but one step I may see. And I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on and I know he watches me. Whenever I am tempted, whenever clouds arise, when song gives place to sighing, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to him, from care he sets me free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Thank you, Mary. And thank you to all of you for joining us for worship this day. 
One announcement to share with you, we are looking for readers and singers for our Christmas Eve online service. We're going to be recording folks reading scriptures and singing Christmas carols in your homes and put that together as part of our online Christmas service and probably use it for part of our service in, in person in Lanesboro that night. If you would be interested in helping or if you would like to be part of our online choir singing Silent Night, please let me or Cindy at the church office know. Now, I would invite you to receive the dismissal with blessing. Go in peace, in the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen.